would do. It's such a divine pleasure to see you again. Rillanid uh, will actually uh, be so bold as to uh, motion off a bit to the side, and uh, as he's doing so, actually slide off the mask enough to say, in his normal voice, How did a rake such as yourself manage to sneak into such an exclusive event? He, uh, he, he smiles uh, at Rillanid. It was not entirely easy, my lord, but a... Um uh, well, truth be told, a, uh, a functionary or two might owe me uh, a favor, he smiles, and I wouldn't miss this for the world. Uh, such a grand celebration, such palpable dread and pain, he sort of draws in air. <sighs> it is intoxicating, is it not? Yes, that would be one interpretation of it. I had noon known, though, when I had saw you. And you had somehow done something of the nature. And I hear I thought you had made friends with the new noblesse who has moved into the settlement. He, uh, he smiles slightly. Oh, yes. Cheslara de Dral. A, um, interesting woman, to say the least. I have currently put out some feelers, if that is what you're asking, my lord. That business is not much I care for. Her attitudes are not of much interest to me. Uh, could, but I could see how her her interest could be of your interest. Yeah, he smiles. She has uh, money to spend and is seeking a cultivated and uh, appreciative company. Little of which can be currently acquired, uh, particularly as the, she is from the grand noble city of Tericia, full of the latest fashion and exotic items, none of which are currently possessed here. Yes, yes, she has extolled her lament over the limited um, shopping possibilities. He, he smiles slightly. And it looks right. At any rate, I will be brief. I have much to attend to, and so do you. There is an proposition, an opportunity which might interest you, given your skill set and the fact that you have somehow managed to sneak into this festival without being noticed by any of my family, and summarily sent to Gorval. <laughs> he uh, is, um, you know, throws uh, Gorval uh, a look over there, and uh, you know, if, um, the smile doesn't fade from him, and then looks bad. Actually, uh, yes, I am listening, my lord. And really, this is. There are opportunities that are rising in the coming years. This a kingdom, as it is, as it plans on being in the future, does not have much in the way of expert individuals in the same vein as yourself. I am looking for such expert individuals to help uh, keep an eye on things. I spend so much time outside of this realm, and uh, it's helpful to keep tabs, and in exchange you get linked up with other people who like to keep tabs. So many tabs shared, might be able to find something profitable on one of them. Hmm, he, you know, he gently taps his, uh, his lips with, um, with one of his fingers, and then he says, That does sound very intriguing, my lord, and you have already treated me so well. He smiles. Were it not for me, you would have died out there where we found you. Then again, perhaps, were it not for me, you would have made it back to Teresia without any problems, but that's neither here nor there, really. In, indeed, indeed, my lord, he, he smiles. As well, that does sound interesting. I have, I had hoped to um, maybe set up uh, some um, form of business here in town. Perhaps that is uh, also something that I could entreat upon you um, to help with. In return, I would be glad to assist you with anything that you might require. 
Perhaps, perhaps, yes, we shall share those details at a future time. Is she who follows me, the Mistress of Whispers, uh, contains far more information on the matter. And since she is not a drow, I don't have to worry about you trying anything on her. <laughs> he, uh, he looks positively scandalized. Is that me trying anything? Oh, perished a thought, my lord. I, I remember you trying quite a few things. <laughs> he, uh, he he laughs a, a clear and uh, quite uh, quite beautiful laugh and says, you're such a charmer, my lord. <laughs> it just breaks down into like that that rakish, you know, giggle fit or whatever the fuck they call it. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> rakish giggle fit? I'm rakish not sure what that giggle is. Rakish giggle fit. I, you know, neither am I, but it sounds appropriate for the situation. I don't know what drow are either, so. Yeah, that's true. Just make it as we go. Write what it says in the comments below. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Describe the rakish giggle fit. Go. And Send uh, fan art to this email address. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. Slight uh, back on the mask. I'll let, uh, I'll let Ism get on with his, uh, his business. He will be entreated later for discussion mm -hmm. regarding the Capstone Project. And he flows out uh, wearing his usual sort of scandalous outfit. <laughs> flows uh, out. Yeah, that is a cons like real. It's gonna be like, where did he get like the material or the craftsperson? It was that damn noble woman we import. <sighs> <laughs> mm. Fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have more important things to worry about. I'll think about it later. Were you going to uh, communicate with the alchemist, any, uh, Malachi? Uh, pleasantries mostly. Okay, sure. Just to you know, the alchemist, uh, you know, he talks back in in his uh, you know, rumbling, booming voice and exchanges pleasantries back. She will, however, ask if they also had had trouble with the f the quakes and the the flaming thing and whatnot. Yes, the alchemist will report that they have indeed, mostly along the the uh, the, the area bordering the drow, which is something he wished, uh, you know, he, he has heard some things from um, uh, from the high priestess, what this uh, matter might pertain to. And he expresses some concern. Oh, no, no, I say certainly. It is something we should, all three parties, the drow, the Ziggis drow and the Zan, get together of. We are not an alliance for nothing, certainly, and having spoken to the White Spider, this is something they have suffered under as well. It is something we might have to get together and find a solution for in unity, although I can assure you that we, Drow at least, have already begun searching for such a way of ending this threat to our realm. The alchemist nods. Indeed, matron. I acknowledged the presence of your high priestess in the city allowed her access to the College of Dreams. As I understand it, her research was uh, fruitful. Oh, dear, not certainly. You know then what this whole thing pertains to. It seems that there is an unstable rift somewhere below. But that is the truth as far as we have found out. We have seen it, although we do not know if it is the singular one. Frowns. More research will have to be done, and since we are the ones closest to it, it seems prudent that we are the ones to actually go and do field work. However, this is a problem that threatens all of our three realms, and perhaps it is a good time to test and see if the Silk Alliance will hold when under pressure. We have ended one threat to our realms, and much good has come from it. Let us end this one together as well, and much good will come from that too, I'm sure. Alchemist considers, and then slowly nods, and then he says, the people of the Xan will listen to any such proposal with an open and charitable mind, Matron Vitharia. She'll not. Uh, good. That is all I hoped. In addition to that, there is the matter of our new capital here. 
Do you like its location, its grandeur? He looks around. It is... He looks at the cathedral. It is certainly imposing, Matron Vithoria. Currently, he looks at the cathedral. It seems to be a place, a center of worship, more than a trading location. Yes, that it is, certainly. Our priorities are, however, set on trading, and we have considered the possibility of somehow easing the travel from here to Zan, either with a road or perhaps channels that direct water so that sh sh boats could sail down such a channel and easily transport goods back and forth. The alchemist listens and then slowly nods and says, That would be favorable, I think, yes. Something to look into, for sure. On that note, would the Zan prefer a highway paved and well-maintained, of course, or the rather more difficult to make, but perhaps easier to maintain waterways? I think he seems to consider. The people of Xan have always preferred to walk on land rather than water, matron. The road seems the easiest way for us. Good. I shall speak to this Gisrael as well, and perhaps it will then be possible to build a road going all the way from Zan to Duvenil and then to the Gisrael caverns, so that we may all three meet here on this very location and trade. Exchange what we have and get what we need. Alchemist slowly nods. An open market would indeed benefit all of us, I think. No, this is good. I'm glad to hear the San are interested in continued uh, fortune, growth, and cooperation for all. Miles, you must bring my my best to the eldest. The uh, strange eyes and face uh, on the uh, on the alchemist. Uh, you know, moves almost imperceptibly, and then he says, Understood, patron. Know that many eyes are focused upon you and your endeavor with great interest. Yes, yes I had understood as much. I hope we are not being a boring show. Yeah. Uh, you know, a, a low rumbling sound. Who? What? A lot of things is a uh, you know a form of gurgling laughter comes from the alchemist. Not at all, matron. It has been quite a learning experience. You know, to both Miku and the second sage and says, certainly, someone that the Zen are intris intrinsically um, placed inside. I hope, of course, that you have heard no complaints from your citizens abroad. The uh, alchemist uh, shakes his head uh, slowly. No, I uh, can't say that I have, matron. Not good. Good. Very well, then. I'm glad you're enjoying yourselves. Speak around. There is no danger in making bridges. Hmm. She then raises her glass, drinks a little wine, and then takes to leave towards the white spider. Like to imagine, just like a like a like a trail of like servants behind her carrying oh, like, yeah. various trays. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Trying not to step on the gown. <laughs> yep. She's eating like a, a, a twelve course meal. Yeah. Yep. Walking, just taking <laughs> her hand out and like taking a bite. And... Like like little like little like mushroom wood like picks with like hors d'oeuvres basically just. Yep. Like mm, that's undercooked. I'll have to figure out which chef was responsible for that later. Burn him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Flay him. Mm. Send him into the tunnels. There we go. <laughs> Hang that one. Yeah, there's a, there's a, yeah, of course, there's like a swarm of servants on, on respectable distance from Alaria, at, at, attending to her every whim. Obviously. Mm. Obviously. Respectable distance. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. She will send your ass to the cathedral. 
<laughs> they have seen that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it has been duly noted. It is an honor. <laughs> we'll be getting into the law for minor like disturbances of public space and whatnot. That'll be the punishment. Go Some civilizations like chop off your hand if like you, like you commit theft. No, 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 no. <laughs> you were sent to the test of a garris. That's right to determine whether you're fit to keep that hand. <laughs> Crime plummets in the kingdom. Yep, clearly. <laughs> Deterrence that's, does work. So that's how the corruption starts going. <laughs> I like to think of it as rehabilitation more than deterrence. Yeah. They come sure. back and they're like, like, like new people. Entirely, they have I'm this distant, boy. faint stare, like random sort of just panic attacks and shivers and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, that certainly rehabilitated in my book. Yeah, and they hear voices. Oh, oh. Well, one yes. voice. <laughs> That's normally not a good sign. Uh, well, and there he does. Everyone should. Mm. <laughs> look how look how Elinary turned out. Yeah, she's yeah. doing well for herself. Model citizen. <laughs> because all other citizens are modeled upon her behavior. You too yeah. could be as effective as she is at life. <laughs> Matron grade wages from the comfort of your own home. That's right. Five it's easy payments at ninety nine ninety five. They're actually <laughs> not that good. Everything considered. A zero gold piece wage. Yeah. You lift some money some here and there. Time. It has some other perks. Like the swarm of servants. Yes, the swarm of servants. Village that, that, to doing people willy nilly whenever she wants to. Yeah. 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 Wonderful powers that are completely non-mechanical. <laughs> Go talk to the white spider. Sure. Fantastic. Meanwhile, anyone have anything else that they wanted to, to do during the fet? Um, Rain will actually like to um, speak to Tevin Quill when he's not, um, you know, when he's not speaking to anyone else who seems to be any importance. <laughs> Sure, you know, Gor uh, Gorval will, you know, at some point, uh, you know, sweep away and talk to Andoria, something. Yeah. You, know, you, you know, you know, Tether's not having to worry about the drawbridge right here, so <laughs> it's, it's a great opportunity. Quall looks over to Rinkalar and says, Lord Commander. Yes, Warden Quall. How have you been enjoying our um, palais? Certainly spectacular, my lord. He looks at the cathedral. You enjoy what's been constructed? It certainly yeah. has a um, the dark and mysterious charm to it. That is for sure. Has there been any trouble with, um, you know, outs and either with people inside or outside of our, I guess, VIP zone? Nothing that wouldn't be anticipated, my lord. There is a lot of um, uh, commoners about, mainly labour for the build all the buildings that my lords have, cons have constructed via, via the council. Yeah, licks his lips. And some disturbances are to be expected. We are suppressing them as best we can. Very well. There are some matters I'm going I wish I would like to speak to once this. Um once our parlay is over and we have a bit more privacy, I, there is there are a few matters of um, of defence I wish to, I wish to speak to you about soon. Also, of great concern considering that soon we should we might we might be able to have a stand we might actually be able to have a standing military inside our capital. That is about time, my lord. I haven't treated upon the council before to speed up this fact, but it fell on deaf ears. I thought. I've wanted to put one up for quite a while, but unfortunately, our votes plus nowhere real to set up a good military capital did not did not help. It looks about we are honestly in a pretty bad way, my lord. If we were to be attacked, we would have to rely entirely on militia with little or no training and mercenaries. Even with the defense of Vothus, we wouldn't be able to stand very long, I feel. Vorthus is fairly defensible as it stands. This, however, 
motions to to Duvenil is out in the open. Certainly a grand spectacle and a show of force, but it is only an effective show if we can actually defend it. Yes, which is why later I'm going to speak to you about some um, some security procedures to help try and ease this problem. He nods. Understood, my lord. I will be uh, assisting with any and all of my capabilities. Oh, and can you make sure your guards just keep just keep an eye if you see um, any anything unusual? Also, if you see, um, for, for example, the high priestess leave the cathedral, to keep an eye out. I can keep. Uh, I can order my guards to keep an eye out. Sure. Do you wish to be told as soon as she is spotted, my lord? Or I'd, is it I'd just like, a... I'd like, to, I'd, like to be in, I'd like to be informed, but it is not of the, it's not of the highest importance, but it would be good to, to keep them being kept informed. Understood, my lord. Now, let's hopefully enjoy a drink. Je- just as a glass of wine. Oh, yeah. The quarrel takes it and takes a sip, looks around. And with that, you know, back back to general parlaying. Sure. Suddenly a train passes by my house. Mm hmm. It helps to add to the ambiance. It does. The train of merchants uh, uh, passes uh, the house. Yes, yeah, the great uh, fungal jungle, you know, groaning under the weight of all of this awesome shit. We are Zion! <laughs> we are not afraid! Oh no. Oh no. Oh. That was a that was a terrible scene. Anyway. <laughs> and, then, and then from the ceiling above us. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's when the elves tunnel in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just open, comes down like a, an emerald spire. <laughs> T- tunnels down. Mm. We don't have any mobile suits. Shit, what do we do? Crap! There is uh, only one other person I'm uh, interested in speaking with at length, and that's because, you know, it ends up being, you know, get to the bottom of the list, and it's like, I don't fucking understand how the fuck, you know, this will this will help solve the mystery, you know, it's gonna 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 drop the formalities, you know, it is perplexing to reel it in, like, you know, the fact that so many of their own volition have chosen to flock to a drow empire is baffling to him. Like, have we really, like, remade our image that well? Or are people just that desperate? We're fucking evil. We like, we like eat people and shit. Like, man, these guys are really roughed up. Oh, but I for, like, also for, eat for, people, huh? But, but for, like, Dwergar to move in, too? That's... <laughs> <laughs> it's just like... All right, that looks like an individual just brooding darkly in a corner, hoping that someone comes to engage him in conversation. Something like that. Especially the Grand Diplomat, you know, after his, I'm like, well, I guess I checked off everyone important from the list. <laughs> guess we're at the bottom. You're a fucking Dwergar. I guess. Slide the mask back on, make sure the funeral shroud straighten. <laughs> Brush off the shoulder a bit, and then cruise that, that you know, that, that heavy mask laden with sapphire as uh, he makes his way over. And, uh, he reckons he's going to try to brush up on his rusty dwarf. It's been a while since he's used that. Pretty much mm-hmm. since the last time he tortured a dwarf. Oh, that was a good day. That was a good day. Uh, good memories. Until the Herald came. Mm-hmm. 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 Nick's blessing. <laughs> well, the Dwergar, as uh, really approaches, uh, seems to, you know, uh, he'll take uh, another... A uh, clunk of wine, and then you know, wipe his beard, and uh, look at him as gruff as a dragger always looks. And then when they approach, he approaches, he will make a stiff bow towards him. Is the Dwergar alone here? Did you know, like other Dwergar, like hanging about, like in the Dwergar entourage? Uh, he uh, there is there is a few more around him, but he right. uh, he seems to be the leader. All right, Rilnid will uh will clear in his uh. His rusty, you know, accent of dwarven, once again blunted by the mask. I am Lord Rillanid, scion of House Vitharia, grand diplomat of the Duchy of Duvenil. None of those pleasantries or titles really matter in this situation, as I have come with immense curiosity in this regard, 
seeing the long-standing divide between Drow and Duragar throughout longer than you and I could possibly fathom, why it is that Duragar of their own volition have come here. Uh, Dragar uh, makes a grimace that might be a smile or not. Really, is not actually quite sure. And then he says, um, "Lord, Lord Rillanid of House Vitharia, Then I am Aster Drekken of House Drekken. He makes another stiff bow. As you say, how do people generally uh, find each other at weapons uh, at weapons length? But." And he looks about, looks at the cathedral, the general settlement. Uh, rumor is abound, my lord, that this might not be the uh, typical drow settlement. You sent out quite the ambitious call for workers, stone masons, and other craftsmen as such. It was decided that House Dragon might have business interests here. Well, then looks to his left and his right. Certainly, I think it could be noticed quite easily, given the others who have moved in, as well as the races present at this fact, that we are not of a the drow society to which outsiders are accustomed. Indeed, and I share this freely, we are a rebel splinter faction, primarily interested in warfare with the merciless throne far below. Our interests as such end up being then towards <laughs> more peaceful relations with others, Politely enough, perhaps, we just don't see anyone else as dangerous compared to the wrath of our homeland. Uh, as a dragon makes another grimace that might be a smile or not, you're not sure. And then he says, uh, well, that explains a few things then, Lord Vitharia. Indeed. Uh, as I said, I represent a, um, a business interests of the, of the house and clan dragon. We are always on the lookout for profitable relationships. Many have said that it is foolish to treat with the drow, uh, seeming our long and brutal history, he smiles. I have uh, myself been at a weapon's length with your people at several occasions, my lord. But from time to time, when the powers align, and when the stars are right, if you will, he sort of winks at him, then a uh, trade agreement of sorts can be forged. Real did, you know, opens like his, you know, his gesture, like extending his arms. Certainly that is possible to arrange, however... In its current state, this settlement is of quite distance from anything outside of the jungle. We have not yet finished a road or a sea route across the lake, which would connect Duvenil and our bountiful orchards with the rest of this realm. And nods. Indeed, my lord, and it is as such, because your need is apparently great for skilled craftsmen, that I and my troop have arrived. He looks about. We seek, as it would be called, gainful employment. He makes the grimace again. Certainly there is much of that to be gained, given our bountiful influx of wealth, as well as our grand ambitions. There is much that we would do, and considering our attitudes towards our former society, we, uh, we do not carry the same... Uh, the same limitations 
when it comes to viewing outsiders. All are welcome, so long as they bear merit. And certainly the influx of your people has proven to be quite meritorious. Well, that is good then. He, he smiles. Then what we would request, my lord, is that indeed yeah, we are eager to build. That is what we like. And to earn money, of course. He smiles. Me and my uh, my troop are there, are therefore at uh, uh, your disposal when it comes to whatever mining or engineering needs you might need. He motions towards the cathedral. Uh, several of my uh, stone workers have already been at work at some of the uh, fresques and gargoyles and other horrors that adorn your cathedral. I am therefore here to formally announce our presence in your settlement, my lord, and assure you that we wish no ill will towards you and your ruling family, as long as no ill will is shown towards us. As I said, mutual benefits. We get paid you get Dwagar quality work. Realm and nods. I have not had the fortune of meeting any Dwagar in my life. I have only encountered surface dwellers. However, I have seen your craftsmanship over the years, and it is a pleasure, I can say, to have your entourage here in this realm. Slurry nods. Good. Excellent. Then it seems to me, my lord, that we have an accord. Mm. Well, then, looks around. Perhaps there is a concession of sorts which could be made in the years to come. More than just money for your people. Should you continue to find this area to your liking, perhaps a suitable guild hall through which you can properly ply your craft. Wouldn't be for a few more years. We have many other grand projects, but should the Dwergar prove willing to stay, then we would certainly desire very much to keep them here. He nods. As long as we are not interfered with. Yes, my people have a long and storied tradition, my lord. And as such... We would look unfavorably upon any, um, well, he looks upon the cathedral, uh, conversion attempts, for instance. So long as your people prove themselves useful, then conversion attempts should be unnecessary. He nods. Excellent, my lord. Then it seems we understand each other quite well. Indeed. He seems to hesitate for like a, a good five seconds. And then he uh, reaches out a, a quite coarse and, uh, and uh, uh, brutish looking hand, I know, uh, towards Rillard. Rillard uh, will, uh, will, will say, as he is extending his own arm, only the very brave or very foolish would uh, enter into any agreement with one such as I. <laughs> the Dragar laughs, and it's the sound of, like, rocks grinding together. It says, the same has been said of me, my lord. Let's see. Uh, shakes Rillinit's hand. Yeah, Rillinit Real Real is, uh, is, is in a hurry to get out of that clench. Rillinit's not that strong. Rillinit doesn't want that in his life. <laughs> <laughs> it does indeed feel like, you know, a landslide over his arm. Yeah. Real 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 is definitely okay, you know, like getting that getting the hand free, you know, pull out the crowbar, you know, loosening it, you know. <laughs> leave the Dwergar to go about their business. He's got so many things to mention to the council. Still thinking about that fucking gnome. <sighs> As the dragon, <laughs> yeah. As the dragon will, uh, will you know, roughly return to his, uh, to his, uh, his group, and uh, they seem pleased. 
Ronan, you know, will, will mutter to himself about Dwarven and how complex it is to speak, and no one, under, no one understands that language anyway. Doesn't matter. I hate being a diplomat. <laughs> <laughs> what do I need to talk to people? So tedious. Oh. Look at me, I'm unapproachable. <laughs> I should yeah. carry a bow. I'm just I, yes, and ha wear a gown. I should just look so damn fabulous. No one dares. 